Hey guys, welcome back to the Outcheaping YouTube channel. My name's Austin, and in today's video, we're getting back working on the 99 Jeep Cherokee. And today we're gonna be starting on the rust repair on this. So this Jeep has got a lot of rust, so this might be a multiple part series. But today we're gonna get as much as we can done. We gotta start ripping out the interior so that way we can fix the floors and then work our way out to do the rockers and then soon the doors. Now today we're gonna to be primarily focusing on the rust that's on the main floor pans. So up front where the seats are on the front section of carpet. So we're gonna to have to be pulling out the entire interior up front and addressing all the rust that we have, start cutting out the rust and welding in some new stuff. So we got a lot of work ahead of us, so let's get started. Alright, so over here on the passenger side, as you can see, it's not looking too good for this Jeep. Pretty much all the rocker is gone and the inner rocker over here is gone and it's actually exposed to the carpet. And on top of that, we got some rust on the floors. It's not too bad, but around the seat bracket where they usually rust out, that's pretty crusty there. And it looks like just on the edge of this floor pan, it's pretty, pretty spongy on there. Um, another thing is, in here, this giant hole, this is actually inside of the seat bracket. If you guys look down there, which you probably can't see, but it looks like the Titanic inside. So I already went ahead and ordered a factory seat mount for the passenger side. I don't think the driver's side is too bad, but once we expose the carpets and everything, if it's bad, I can put that in order as well. So my general plan for this is to basically start cutting out all the rust that's in here. Um, I want to hopefully save as much of the rocker panel as I can because I'm going to need that metal on there to weld in some new 2x6 rock sliders, which basically replace your rocker panel. I've done it on my last Jeep and it turned out really well, so hopefully we have enough metal here um, to weld to. Otherwise, we're going to have to start uh, replacing little patch panels here and there. And as you can see, the doors aren't any better. I can stick my hand all up in here. Um, so I do have a new set of doors that's going to go on this. I've had it for over a year. Um, they're not perfect, they just have a little bit of rust, but it's nothing that I can't take care of. Um, easily grind it off and repaint it. Um, and I plan on putting some lower door armor on the new doors as well to cover up any uh, imperfections and uh, any little body work I have to do since I'm probably not gonna color match it. So this is pretty much the worst side. The uh, driver's side isn't any better, but it's not quite as bad as the side over here. So basically what we're gonna do um, to start off with is pull out the interior. We're gonna have to pull out the front seats the rear bench seat, the center console, then we should be able to pull up the front carpet section and this is gonna expose all of the uh, metal floor pans. Then we can address how bad the rust really is where we're gonna to have to patch up some areas. Now I'm not doing full floor pans that you can buy um, for factory replacement ones because they're just a little too expensive. Um, I'd rather fabricate something because I might not have to replace the entire floor pan, but I just have to do little sections here and there. So I got some 16 gauge steel, which is a little bit thicker than uh, factory floor pans. So it might be a little bit harder to bend into place into patch panels I need, but, but we'll have to figure out something to make that work. But it should be a little bit stronger and a little bit thicker so I can easily weld onto it. So I'm gonna go start off by disconnecting the battery since I'm gonna have these doors open for a long time. Don't want it to kill the battery. And then we'll start taking out the interior. All right, so looking over here on the passenger side at the interior, and it's actually not too bad for over 300,000 miles on this Jeep. But I'm gonna start off over here on removing the passenger seat. We got two bolts up front that are gonna be a 13 millimeter. And because that inside of the seat bracket was exposed to the elements, these bolts are probably gonna snap. So I'm just gonna take an impact to it. It's fine if they snap since we got the new seat bracket. And then on the back side of the seat, we got an 18 millimeter nut. And then we also have another 13 millimeter bolt. I'm gonna pull out these uh, liners right now. See if these guys come out. Surprisingly, that came out. I'll move this forward. All right, so I'm going to apologize in advance for the camera angles. Sometimes I can't really get it in the small garage, but hopefully you guys can get the point across. But on the back side, you got that 18 millimeter nut and then the 13 millimeter bolt on the other bracket, which looks pretty crusty and then the other side it's actually detached and not even there because it's probably just rusted out. And that side broke. 
All right, so now our seat is nice and free. So I'm gonna take this out, do the same thing to the driver's side, and then we'll meet back up, get the center console out, and then take out the rear seat. So for this rear seat, it's gotta pull it forward. And then on the passenger side, there's a little uh, lever on the bottom here where it hinges. You just want to rotate that and then lift it up and then pull it out this way. And yeah, this uh, back left bolt is completely gone pretty much. Must have rusted out and not even attached anymore. And then once you got the bolts free on the driver's side, there's actually a seatbelt wire that you have to disconnect. So you want to lean it up and find it and find the disconnection point. There we go. All right, so for the center console, you're going to want to make sure you have all your uh, stuff that you keep in here out of here. So I just got a few things. And that's going to basically expose a couple screws that are on the bottom. So I'm going to take a Phillips screwdriver and undo these. And now we got some more screws that are going to be hidden underneath these panels up here. So we got to take off the shifter and all we got to do for this is basically yank on it. Just like that. You can stick your fingers under here, pry this up, take that out and then you can twist out the bulb. And then same thing with this four wheel drive selector, this bezel is just going to pop out. Then we'll undo the bulb in here as well. Now that's going to expose two screws that are up here. One in the bottom right corner of the transmission shifter. And then one on the right side over here with the transfer case shifter. So I'm going to keep all these screws inside here so that way I don't lose them. So now we'll have to take our parking brake, put it all the way up, and then lift up on the back of the console. And this is where we might actually have to move these shifter shift levers around to get it to come out. I think we gotta put this in four low. So make sure your wheels are chalked, put it forward. Then four low. Wiggle it out of here. And there we go. Then you're going to find more gross garbage in here. I'll have to get rid of that. But now we got our duct piece basically for the rear floor vents. This basically just slides out of here. All right, so with all the seats and the center console out, we can start taking out the outer trim that's holding in the rest of the carpet. Um, it's pretty straightforward. They got a bunch of Phillips screws on these Cherokees. Um, on mine, the trim panel's not looking in good shape. A lot of them are, uh, a lot of the screws are popped through. Now these screws, they like to rust and it's kind of hard to get a Phillips screw on it, but if you have a uh, rusted out rocker, you can get a vice grips from the inside of it and actually twist it that way. So that way you're not ruining these trim panels. But the sequence on taking these out is we gotta take out this one and that's popped around the B pillar over here. And then we can take out the front lower quarter panel over there. And in the back corner, there's 11 millimeter nut. Um, on that as well and then it pops out of place and then we can just fold back these trim pieces over here Once we get this piece out and just kind of fold it over there Then we should be able to get the carpet out another thing is is uh, This is a very common problem on the Cherokees where the center console bracket actually breaks because it's plastic And you have a loose center console. So if you want to replace it now is the time to do it um, But you don't necessarily need to remove this when we do the carpet since there is a hole here We just basically have to lift it all up Now this is going to be kind of held in by the seatbelt over here, so we got a Torx over here if we want to take that off, and then we can remove this trim panel. And then this rear over here just folds to the side, and then basically our carpet's free. We just have a couple uh, plastic push pins on this back over here, 
and then our carpet should come up from the back. We got our trim piece, didn't have a nut in mine. And this Torx is looking to be a T50. Maybe a little bit bigger, but that's the biggest one I got. And there we go. There we go. So I'm going to pull this through the trim and then put our bolt back into place so we don't lose it. Now we got this plastic push pin right here. You can just use something to pry it up. Just like that. And now our carpet's basically exposed from this corner. I'm just going to throw this back into place so I don't lose it. Now I'm going to do the other side and we'll meet back up and then we'll pretty much be ready to pull out the carpet. Alright, so this carpet's ready to come out. We start over here just kind of peeling it back away from the firewall and the edges over here. And then we're going to work around where our shifter is and our parking brake. That's going to be the main thing is just trying to fit it through there. We also have to keep in mind we got a wire over here so we're going to push that through. Um, and just get this all loose and then it should be able to come out. Now we might actually have to uh, move around the shifters once again. Put my foot on the brake. And if you want to make it a little bit easier, there's a little thing of carpet right here, about an inch wide. You can actually cut that if you want to. It might make it a little bit easier in pulling this out. All right. I'm taking everything out the passenger side door. Just kind of roll it up into a ball, easier to maneuver, send it out. Alright, so the damage report is in and as you can see, we got some rusty floors. Primarily on the front seat area, as you can see, this is just all scale. So I like to go around with the hammer and just, if anything pops through, obviously we're going to have to cut it out. It's looking like we're going to have to cut out this whole section here and on the driver's side. Get this bracket out and I might order a... Uh, bracket for the driver's side over there because it's looking pretty scaly as well. And then also, as we saw from the outside, our inner rocker is rotted out in this section here. It's still good over here, but towards the end, back there, it's kind of rotted out. So at this point, we're just going to go around, start seeing what's solid, seeing what's not, and then we're going to take a uh, angle grinder and start cutting out all this rust and get everything all prepped, get everything nice and clean. Um, so that way we can start fabbing up some metal and start replacing this. Alright, so I vacuumed up most of the uh, rust that was uh, all loose in here. Um, now I'm just determining where I want to necessarily cut. Um, I don't want to leave basically any rust in there, and it's looking like it's coming up the transmission tunnel. There's a little bit of uh, rust here, so even though it might still be a little bit solid, I'm going to cut a little bit higher to this fresh metal right there. Um, another common place where these rust out, where it's actually kind of hidden, is up here on the uh, lower firewall. There's some factory seam sealer over here, so it looks like it's all solid, but it rusts from the outside. Um, I had this problem on my last year too, so if you take a hammer to it, that's all blown through there so we're gonna have to basically replace this on both sides because it's probably rusted on the other side too so looks like I'm gonna have a floor pan going all the way up here so our piece of sheet metal we're gonna have to have a bend coming up to there um, but basically right now I'm just gonna go around take a sharpie and mark where I want to cut and we'll start cutting away um, until there's pretty much no rust um, not a whole solid plan on exactly what I'm gonna do but I'm just gonna go and see where this project takes me now once you cut this whole section out, if you're just doing it at the perimeter, you're going to run into a lot of spot welds because the uh, unibody frame rail actually runs right here and it's spot welded to it. So we might have to take a chisel and hammer and just kind of peel it away from that. And then we should be able to be exposed to the inside of the frame rail. So if there's any rust in there, we can take care of that with whatever, whatever tools we got um, with wire wheels. Clean that up and I'm going to use some POR15 and coat pretty much everything. I'm going to do the entire floors in this when I'm done. I also picked up some sound detonator mat that will lay over this so once we put the interior back together it's pretty much going to be nice. Um, also mentioned since you got your carpet out now is a good time to power wash it if you're keeping it. 
I might uh, order some new carpets, haven't decided yet, um, since they're only like 150 bucks or so. Um, and my carpets were pretty musty when I pulled it out. I mean, it downpoured a few days ago and I was driving in the rain um, and it was all pretty much wet underneath here because water just kind of seeps up through these rust holes and then soaks into that insulation behind it and just kind of water retains and then the rust keeps getting worse and worse and worse. And once we get over to the driver's side, when we're cutting out stuff welding, we want to keep in mind that we do have that fuel line that runs inside of the driver's side frame rail. So just keep that in mind. You don't want to start any fires and burn your Jeep down, even though it might be a good idea with all the rust you got. Yeah, so the remaining metal on this side, that's nice and solid. Just a little bit of surface rust, but that's easily can be uh, cleaned up. But that should be nice solid metal that we can weld to. So I'm just going to be taking this out a little section at a time. And then we'll meet up back um, when we have another damage report. I'm only going to do the uh, passenger side right here. Get this all squared away before I start on the other side. Alright guys, quick update here. I got most of the front section out. I still have to go back here, but I got to find a way to uh, hold up this mat right here so it's not on my way to get that rest of the front area out. And then I'll have to get on these sides. But uh, for getting this out, as you can see right here, this is our unibody. It's kind of like a U-shape, has flanges on the side, and that's where our floor pan was actually spot welded in. So it's a little bit time consuming. Since I've got this type of uh, heat shield and sound detonator that was like on this main floor pan, you can't really see the spot welds to drill them out. So. So the best thing to get them out was just kind of bending them and then kind of peeling them back with the vice grips right here. And then I would go in with a chisel and a hammer and pound out where those uh, spot welds are. And it works for the most part, but it is time consuming. Right now I'm tackling this uh, front seat bracket right here, kind of peeling it up away from the floor. And then I cut over here on this side. I'm going to cut over there and get this main thing out. And, and I think for the floor pan, we're just going to continue cutting it all out until these rear seat bolts. I think beyond that, it's actually pretty solid. But since there is a hole back over here where the uh, back right seat bracket was, I'm just going to replace this in whole entire section. And also, make sure you have the proper PPE on. I got some gloves because the sheet metal is kind of sharp when you uh, cut it out and everything. I already cut myself a couple times and you don't want to get tetanus or whatever. So Make sure you have that on, some uh, ear protection if you're using the grinder, and some safety glasses. Alright, so a quick update over here. I got majority of the floor out over here on the passenger side. I went all the way back to where the uh, seat supports are that are underneath the floor, and I decided to cut them out since it was all pretty much sandwich uh, rust weld together, and there's a couple holes in the bracket as well, so I actually cut it right here on the uh, left hand side of the passenger side seat so that way I can patch it with a, a piece of eighth inch steel um, just weld it to there and then weld it to the unibody over here still have to get this little piece off that's uh, spot welded to the frame and then also over here um, I cut out this section that will put another piece of eighth inch plate and basically getting all this off of the uh, unibody frame rail um, mostly what I did was just use a chisel and a hammer and try to get under there and uh, hammer it up it was pretty labor intensive and time consuming to do so, but uh, I eventually got it all off. I'll have to take a grinder to all these uh, spot welds, grind them flat, and uh, prep everything for when I put the new floor in. Now coming up over here, as you can see, I cut out majority of the inner rocker over here because it's all rusted out. I still have to clean up some stuff, um, especially up here. Um, I gotta continue cutting out the floor all the way up to that seam seal spot behind this uh, mat over here. But I think the way I'm going to go about doing this is actually to uh, do it in three or four different sections of sheet metal. That way it's going to be a lot easier because we got a lot of uh, bends and everything that we have to uh, work around. Especially with this transmission tunnel that's all different shaped and everything like that. I'm still going to go back and clean it up a little bit so it's going to be a little bit easier to uh, weld onto a nice clean surface and without any jagged edges. So I'll probably do one foot or 16 inches just keep going all the way up front and then once we get to this inner rocker I'm going to bend that sheet metal 90 degrees so it comes up and then weld it back up here to the existing inner rocker and everything should be nice and strong. And I think for the most part I might just do lap joints on this um, since butting up stuff can be a little bit hard. I'm not sure yet. We'll see when we start cutting out sheet metal. But before I start laying stuff on, since we got the inside of the frame all exposed here and there's some surface rust, I'm going to clean it up the best I can with the wire wheel. And then I'm going to take some PR15, put a couple coats in there, um, and then on this edge over here, I'm just going to put weld through primer because that's where we're going to be welding it back onto the frame rail. 
And as far as the side over here, you can undo this wiring harness. Um, they got some uh, clips in here that go into the inner rocker that pop those out. You can actually take this whole thing out if you uh, unclip it from the fuse box that's located down in this corner over here. Unfortunately, when I did the uh, speakers and the doors, I actually replaced the wire and tapped onto the wrong side of the plug. So I can't necessarily remove this entirely because it's still kind of connected there, but it still gives me room to work in here. So I'm going to keep going, cleaning everything up, getting all the rust out. Um, it is the next day here now, so I got a little bit more time now that it's Saturday. So let's get started and keep working. it's time for another update so I got the inside of the frame rail over here as you guys saw I wire wheeled whatever I could with that cup disc on there really couldn't get into the uh, tight corners but I got most of the scaly stuff off so that way I can go and PR 15 this right away um, before we start adding sheet metal um, on top of this where it's all hidden um, so I got that cleaned up I'm gonna use some uh, mineral spirits and uh, clean it up a little bit more and then we'll put a couple coats and I'm only gonna go to this top line right here I'm not gonna do the top flange of the unibody rail because I'm going to put some weld through primer since we're going to be welding the uh, floor pan back onto that. So I don't want the PR15 in the way when welding that in place. But yeah, it's coming along. I got uh, over here, this is all cut out or is routed in the wheel well. I still have this little corner over here underneath the fuse panel. I'm not sure exactly how I want to go about doing that. So I'm going to hold off on that for now. Um, but when you're doing a big project like this, the big thing is just to like take small steps. Um, and get little things done at a time instead of looking at the big picture otherwise it's going to be mentally draining pretty much so my plan is um, after i get pr15 on the inside of the frame rail here i'm going to weld a strip for the new seat bracket um, out of eighth inch and that's going to go pretty much over here to the outside uh, where the rocker is and once we get the two by six rocker in we'll weld that into the side over here and it should be nice and solid now once that's in i'm going to do the uh, floor pan in three to four sections i think that's the best way to do it um, so as you can see with the inner rocker how i have it kind of cut up here um, so right here is where i'm going to do one section um, basically just going to put a little bit of lip on the end here and weld it into the existing inner rocker and then the next section is going to have to go up even further and then the third section even further and then we'll see what we have to do over here now as far as the seams right here i think i'm going to butt up the sheet metal to that i should be able to weld that nicely but as far as the transmission tunnel how it has a bunch of curves and everything i'm going to lap it about an inch over the existing sheet metal and put a bunch of relief cuts that way i can bend them around here that way i can tack it to the existing sheet metal here and it would follow the curve of the transmission tunnel All right, so I got the first coat of PR15 down and it's still drying right now, so I can't put a second coat on it quite yet. Um, I went with some weld through primer, put it on this flange on the outside here. And I also cut a new rear seat support out of eighth inch steel. Um, I measured it, it's about 19 by two and a half uh, inches long. And it's basically gonna go right here, replacing the other two um, that were in its place. Um, how they had it from the factory was a seat support came out and just welded here and then another section from here all the way to the inner rocker and I'm just replacing that with one eighth inch section right here now over here where it's going to weld to the flange on the frame it is a little bit notched down so it's going to be fine um, by putting a piece of sheet metal over for our new floor pan and I did make this a little bit longer probably uh, an inch longer so that way when I come and put two by six rocker in I can trim this up to the correct size um, as I weld it in here but I made it a little bit longer for now I also put some weld through primer on the back side of this. So I'm pretty much ready to tack this guy into place. Um, I'm gonna line it up on kinda how it's supposed to go. Put it right here, weld it to the existing bracket there, to these flanges on the frame, and then this should be, for the most part, in place. Then we're gonna start on uh, mocking up the sheet metal that's gonna go in this first section right here. 
All right, so I got our brace clamped on by a couple C clamps to get rid of any gaps that are in there. So now we're pretty much ready to weld this in. All right, so I got that support all welded into place, um, mostly just from the top side here. Um, it's pretty strong if I want to later on from the underside, I could weld it on the underside of the tab. Um, but for now, that's gonna work. I actually already remade the uh, first piece that's gonna go into here. As I was talking before, it has this one inch 90 degree flange that's gonna go up here into the existing inner rocker. And then I kind of did sort of like a cut and fold over here as it follows the uh, curve of the transmission tunnel. So if I set this into place, it's gonna fit nicely down in here. Um, I will have to put some pressure on it as I tack weld into place. I also drilled six holes over here, which are gonna basically be spot welds onto the uh, flange on the uh, unibody frame. So I'll just push it down and tack that in. Now over here, I was gonna do a butt joint up to the existing floor. Um, I changed my mind on that because my curve was not exactly straight on that. So I'm just gonna do a lap joint here, which is no big deal. Um, we'll just seal everything all up when we're done um, with the entire floor. And as far as over here, if I push down, everything is going to start laying flat. And if there's any uh, creases or anything that's popping up, I can take a hammer and lay it up uh, flat against the uh, transmission tunnel. Now, as far as making that 90 degree bend, um, since I don't have a sheet metal bender, which would be really nice in this case, and I don't even have a vise which you can use to make some uh, bends in there, I actually just uh, clamped it to my table and used a piece of two by four to act as the 90 degrees and took a hammer to it and started hammering it all the way down um, right at that bend mark. I'll show you guys a video of me doing that. But this is pretty much ready to go in place. I got all the uh, paint uh, ground off off of the old original floor. Um, I'm gonna go back and put some weld through primer on the, uh, anything that's hidden and on the underside of this new piece of sheet metal right here. And then we'll get ready to weld this into place. All right, it's the next day now, and last night I finished welding in this first little section right here, and it actually turned out fairly decent. Um, I did blow a couple holes through on the uh, transmission tunnel here. Um, that's because I had a lot of heat in this area when I was kind of filling in those relief cuts that I made. So uh, when you're doing this, you kind of want to jump around so that way you don't have too much heat in one area. Otherwise, you're going to start blowing holes or possibly warp some sheet metal. And I noticed that it did warp a little bit if I were to weld in one spot and I noticed there's a gap forming between the uh, two pieces that I'm working with. Um, so to fix that, you can easily just take a hammer and hammer it back down and it usually kind of stays in that area. So that way you're not trying to weld in a gap. And another thing when you're welding the sheet metal, you don't want to continuously lay a bead down. You just want to keep doing a start, stop, start, stop um, a little bit at a time so that way you don't introduce too much heat. Otherwise you're going to be blowing holes. So over here on the inner rocker where I welded it to the existing one, that one turned out uh, pretty decent. Everything is nice and strong here. Um, I really highly recommend putting these plug welds in. Um, this actually helped a lot because uh, the unibody actually kind of slopes down a little bit. It starts going right here and then back over here it kind of levels off. So I've been able to uh, push down on this panel, um, put a vice grips right here or a clamp and clamp it to the flange it's on the unibody frame. That kind of pulled it down. I plug welded these and now I got this floor pan starting to uh, slope down a little bit. And over here there's a factory drain hole plug that was kind of like epoxied into place. Um, so I'll have to go back and just put a uh, little piece of sheet metal. Um, I can actually slide it under because it's indented into the floor and just plug that up um, as well. But right now I'm going to start on the next section over here. And this one's probably going to go right to here, kind of where I have it cut off because of how the rust was. Um, so I'm pretty much going to do the same process. Um, except we got to go a little bit higher over here on the inner rocker and add another curve and then we'll have some more relief cuts and then I do have some holes over here um, from the old seat bracket uh, when they're spot welded to the uh, transmission tunnel over here it kind of ripped out a little bit but that's fine with our new piece it's going to have relief cuts over here as well and then we can cover up these holes pretty much but as far as looking forward um, after we add that one pan in I'll probably add another big section and it's going to butt up to the existing floor pan where it meets up back over here. 
um, then I'll probably have to put a separate section over down there and then I'm gonna have to address um, the inner rocker over here underneath the fuse panel I still have to cut out a little bit but I just gotta think in my mind how I want to go about uh, fabbing up a, a piece of sheet metal to replace that since it's got some weird uh, curve that's up here and everything like that but for now we're gonna start welding in the uh, new floor pan and keep working our way up Alright, so this is the next sheet metal piece I came up with. Um, I didn't end up putting relief cuts on the transmission side over here because um, I don't think it'll need it. I think if we tack it and then just kind of hammer it up against it as we go and keep tacking it, it should hold in place because there's nothing too crazy going on here. Um, not like the severe uh, curve that we have going on down there. Then also on the other side I made that 90 degree bend and then that little lip um, that's on an angle because this floor, once again, like I said before, is kind of angling down. so. We're going to set this in place. I already went ahead and put some weld through primer on it. And I drilled eight holes to put some spot welds in. So that way we can weld it up to the uh, frame. And then I should be able to make a nice uh, butt joint right here. There's not too big of a gap. But it's going to set in just like there. And there's a little bit of a gap, but I'll tack it where it's contacting it. And then just use a hammer and kind of hammer it up against there and keep tacking it as I go along. So we got this clamp down for the most part. We'll have to move the clamps as we keep spot welding it in, but we're just gonna take our time and get this guy all welded in. All right, so now for the last big pan over here on the passenger side, I got it pretty much mocked up to where I want it. I got some holes drilled right here. They're going to be spot welds going to the flange that's on the frame rail. And then over here on the inner rocker, I had to come up a little bit more since it's rusted out. So I'm just going to weld it right here where the existing pinch seam is. And underneath where the fuse box is, I had to cut out all that rust over here and then kind of like notch it to this weird uh, contour that's in here. So I'm just going to have to weld that around, weld this up. I might have a little hole here where later on I'm just going to take a little piece of metal and just kind of weld that in. And then I did the relief cuts over here as well. As you can see, they're not quite up against the uh, transmission tunnel, but once I start tacking this in, it's gonna be a lot easier to hammer stuff in place instead of stuff just kind of bouncing back. Uh, once you tack one side of these and then try to hammer the other, it usually stays in place and then you keep going with welding. And then if you go as far as I am up towards here on the front of the floor, it starts going up again into that firewall. So I kind of had to hammer it down with a mallet to kind of give that little bit of a curve right there. And so once we get this welded in, it's gonna be pretty simple. We just got a little panel that's gonna go over here, and then I got another little patch spot that I have to do on the back of the inner rocker, kind of where the rear seat is. But for the most part, it's gonna be a butt joint right here, and then a lap joint pretty much everywhere else. So I'm gonna go get the underside uh, sprayed with some weld through primer, as well as all the uh, surfaces that are hidden on the existing floorboards, and we'll start welding this in. All right, so now for the little piece that's up here that's gonna finish off the front section. Um, it's kind of bent in a weird shape, um, just kind of way the floor was, so I kind of had to make a little bit of a 90 degree rib on the side over here and put some relief cuts and then kind of bent this whole thing in on a curve and then this corner is also kind of like bent down because the floor slopes a little bit more straighter on the left and then a little bit more uh, curvature to it once you go to the right over here in the corner. So I'm going to tack this into place and then just keep massaging the metal um, as I go so that way it perfectly forms to the existing floor that way we don't have any weird gaps. Alright, so now it's time to put in the new seat bracket that we got. Um, I got this one for about 25 bucks off of eBay. Everything is pretty much factory on it. I'll put a link in the description below on where you guys can find it. But the uh, passenger and driver side is going to be a little bit different. Passenger side over here is a little bit longer and the driver side shorter. And I accidentally ordered the driver side uh, wanting the passenger side first. So 
either way I had to order this one so now I got both to do both sides um, but I got this all weld through primer sprayed down underneath the bracket because we're not going to be able to really paint much underneath once we weld this in um, also since I did a lap joint over here um, I just had to peel these uh, little tabs back a little bit so that way it can sit down and then I'll have to hammer it back um, to the shape of the transmission tunnel over here and then we'll weld that in fully but as far as alignment I'm basically going to take measurements off the old bracket on the other side um, which is basically a measurement from the back seat support to the front seat support and it's roughly three inches right in the middle depending on where you measure so I got my measurements in place now I'm ready just to set this in we're going to tack it and then fully weld it in just make sure you got your uh, welded nuts they're going to be facing towards the front now there is a slight gap right here just because the uh, new floor kind of has a little u-shape to it on the front side it's actually perfect but once we weld this in once again we'll just keep hammering massaging the metal until it fits in place and keep welding it in all right so i got it where i want it i'm going to start tacking into place you don't have to make sure it's like dead on accurate where the old seat bracket was you can take some measurements beforehand make it a little bit easier but um, we still have the uh, rear seat mounts that we have to put a new bolt through and uh, weld on some new nuts and stuff. So, so we have some adjustment to work with since we still have to put the back ones in. But once we get the front in, we'll, put, we'll mock the seat up, uh, mark our holes, and then be able to drill the back holes and put that all into place. And one last thing, since this was painted, um, I just took a grinder and cleaned up all the edges where we did welding. So now we're ready to weld this in. Alright, so we got the front seat support all welded in. I basically just put a few stitch welds on each side. No need to fully weld it in. It's pr plenty strong enough. Now the next step I'm going to do is fit the passenger seat back into place here. And I'm going to mark out the rear holes where they're going to be drilled through the floor. And that's going to go through our eighth inch plate that's underneath the floor that we welded in first. And over on the left side, we're going to have a 7 16 bolt. I'm going to pop that into place once we drill our hole and weld it from the bottom. So that way we have a stud how it would be from the factory. Then over here on the right side is just a 5 16 bolt and I'll just weld the nut onto the underside. Alright, so I'm just going to kind of relax this bracket kind of into place and then just put a mark right in the center since they're kind of slotted holes. Now I'll take this back out, drill a 7 16 hole on this side and a 5 16 hole on this side through the new floor pan and through that bracket underneath. Alright, so I got my bolts all into place. We got a 7 16 bolt over here and it's going to be pointing up and I'm basically going to be welding the bolt into place from the underside so that way we got a stud. Then over here I have a 5 16 bolt. Um, that goes down and we're basically just going to be welding the nut from underneath so that way when we bolt it down the bolt goes in from the inside and over here we just have to throw on a nut from the inside. Now these are going to be a little bit different than your factory hardware. I believe the factory hardware is metric but all I have right now is just some standard uh, bolts so we're going to be using that. Should be plenty strong since they are grade 8. So I'm going to go right now and weld them into place. Alright so we got our bolt and nut welded on. Everything threads into place nicely. I also just put a little tack on the top side here since the nut doesn't really go all the way down to the sheet metal since we got that bracket in a way. So just made it a little bit stronger there since the catalytic converter is pretty much uh, right underneath there. It's kind of hard to get from the bottom side. But anyway, that's all in. So our seat's going to bolt up nicely. Um, now before I go and continue on this, I do have to seal it up, put some POR15. Um, but before I do that, I still want to weld in this rocker panel on this side with some 2x6 steel um, because I'm probably going to still be welding to this inner rocker over here and I don't want to paint it yet because um, that's just going to burn right off. So I'm going to leave it up to you guys. Um, if you want me to show you guys how to do the driver's side, it's pretty much going to be the same thing as I did over here on the passenger side. Let me know. Otherwise, the part two series, we're just going to be finishing up with the sealer, paint, and then putting in our carpet and seats again. Now looking forward, since we're going to be putting that 2x6 rocker panel in, um, that's going to be in our next video, so you guys want to stay tuned for that. But that's pretty much going to do it for today. Alright guys, that's going to be a wrap for today's video. Uh, we pretty much got all of the passenger side floor all complete. I just have a little couple 
places towards the rear of the inner rocker to do, but I'm gonna take care of that when we put the two by six rocker in place, and that's gonna be in the next video. But as far as this part one series for replacing the floors on this XJ, you guys let me know if you guys wanna see me do the driver's side. Otherwise, we're just gonna skip forward doing some sealer, paint, and throw the interior back into place, and then this thing should be done. But I wanna thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe to the Outshaping YouTube channel for more how-to content. And if you guys have any questions or comments, make sure to post them below. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video.